Puspuni, a great tribal festival celebrated by almost all tribal communities in Odisha. The warmth of the festival in the chilled winter of December-January creates a festive ambience and flares up the spirit of Juangs, a well-known, particularly vulnerable tribal group in Orissa. The Puspuni marks the transition between the end of a cropping cycle and the beginning of another. Hidden within the steps of the festival are elements of their culture and symbolism, beliefs and perceptions, and vast body of indigenous knowledge and wisdom implicitly and explicitly influencing their lives in the forest. The Juangs are the natives of the Bansapal area in Kyonjhar district. Living in a serene environment, down the Gonasika mountains in the eastern Ghats. Tracing their origin in their folklore and oral traditions, they present themselves as legacies of Rishi. As per their myth, they were born out of Rishi. They believe that the river goddess, emerging for the first time from the Gonasika rock, surprised a party of naked Juangs dancing and ordered them to wear leaves with a threat that they should die if they ever gave up that custom. From that day, they started wearing leaves and they used to be also known as Patuas, the leaf wearers. In course of time, they were divided into subsections with distinct socio-cultural characteristics and ways of life. Juangs have with them a repository of indigenous knowledge and wisdom that are embedded in and reflected through their work traditions, livelihood trends, cultural practices, dealing with natural resources, healthcare and well-being. Their knowledge system is rich in understanding the environment based on which they have shaped up their livelihood earning trends, technologies, processes and practices. Juang classifies their land into four types, namely Thoila, the land for shifting cultivation, Gura, the plains dry land, Badi, the kitchen garden, and Bila, the irrigated wetland for paddy cultivation. They practice shifting cultivation in Thoila, the Poru land. Shifting cultivation is one of the areas offering to understand their indigenous knowledge that underlies their perceptions of local ecology and environment. It is their way of life and has been the source of survival through generations. Shifting cultivation, locally called Thoila Chas or Poru Chas, is a slash and burn type cultivation done on the hill slopes, which is within itself a slope agricultural land technology. The most important aspect of the practice is the understanding of slope ecology, land fertility, seasonality, labor requirement, and timeliness in processes and practices. Immediately after the Puspuni, the Juangs start the field preparation by clearing the forest patches, especially where the forest cover is thin, to make space for cultivation. The decisions regarding which slope to be cleared are taken based on their accumulated intergenerational experiences 
socio-cultural processes and governance mechanisms. The right time for forest clearing is February-March. Before the first shower of early summer rain, the slashes are left to be sun-dried, then piled up and then burnt down. While burning the slashes, they take measures to make sure that the fire does not spread beyond the clearing. As they perceive, fire is essential for soil treatment, especially to reduce the pest infestation in crops in later times. The ash of the burnt slashes also provides soil nutrients. They do not plow the slopes and disturb the soil to prevent soil erosion by runoff during the rainy season. The field preparation starts with certain religious performances. The hill slopes are generally considered community resources. Since very early days, segments of the slopes called the Toila land have been divided among the households following traditional norms enshrined under their customary law. The plots are cut into vertical slices so that each household gets the same type of land with a similar ecological configuration. After one or two showers, examining soil moisture, they broadcast a mixture of seeds, including cereals, pulses, vegetables and oil seeds in the field. For certain crops like pigeon pea, castor, etc., they dibble the seeds. The crops grow with good density and mature at different intervals. The cultivation system is a good example of traditional intercropping. The system of cultivation is locally feasible, sustainable, climate resilient, cost effective, culturally tuned, learned and modified with experiences, uses traditional seeds, requires minimal inputs and is a site-specific technological intervention that is scientific on its own accord. The shifting cultivation portrays their knowledge on fertility restoration, crop moisture relation, soil and water conservation, wildlife crop interaction, suitability of crops at different zones of the slope. <laughs> Since the crops mature at different intervals, the shifting cultivation dictates the work organization and post-harvest management with the division of labor between men and women. The maize feeds them in the rainy season and the millets provide to their food needs in post-monsoon. While cow peas and some preferred pulses make a part of their food habit, pigeon pea, black gram brings them cash from the market. Tubers are dug at the end 
before the early summer rain that facilitates in situ moisture conservation. Sera pati no sapa kor sela pore se rasi buna jibo. Gote borsho biti gala second borsho pore ma bhoni au jiyo pa misigiri se jagre phir sapa korbe. Ta pore akhya turte asila mane ta ko dhana buna jibo. Sera rumha achi kurto achi biri achi au mandi achi gonga achi hordo achi empty buni ke sera ko chasa korbe. Considering the fertility aspects, the second year and third year crops are cultivated with a gradual reduction in the variety of crops. In the third year, millets are usually cultivated because they thrive with minimum soil fertility. After three years, the lands are fallowed for restoring fertility. The Zhuangs hardly have sizable plain lands. Wherever they have, they follow the pattern of cultivation as in the mainstream. Although they choose locally suitable crops. The lowlands are cultivated with paddy. Considering the condition of the land, either short duration or long duration paddy is cultivated. Non-timber forest produce collection and sale supplement their income from shifting cultivation. A lot of indigenous knowledge is intrinsically embedded in the Zhuang practice of shifting cultivation and other farming methods. These knowledge systems are local, site-specific, experience-based, local resources dependent, culturally appreciated, ecologically appropriated, and operate within a climate-centered management framework. The knowledge system would continue to be there with modifications and innovations as long as the practice continues to be there. Although a father doesn't consciously teach his son the aspects of these knowledge systems, the son inherits it by participation and innovates further as means to coping mechanisms. Appreciation of Zhuang indigenous knowledge, no doubt, would prove as a solution to many development problems in the Zhuang world and conservation of their culture at large.